Hello out there and thank you for staying with us on today's business with me, David Ubabadeke. Our focus of conversation will be around the 2020 budget, 2020 10.59 budget as passed by the Senate. Uh, before then, uh, let's take a look at um, a few stories making the headlines in the world of business. Um, a change at the helm of affairs in tax and revenue is set to take place as President Mbadubwari has approved the composition of a new board for the Federal Inland Revenue service FIRS subject to Senate confirmation. A statement from his media aide Garba Sheo said the president has nominated a renowned tax consultant Mohamed Nami as the new chairman. The new board chairman is a tax accounting and management professional with almost three decades of practical working experience in auditing tax management and advisory. The Senate Committee on Appropriation has submitted its report on the 2020 budget. The Senate is expected to commence debate on the committee's reports on the 2020 budget on Thursday. Now, here are details of what happened at the Red Chamber. The committee will today work hard to complete uh, printing the, the details of the budget and we hope that it will be distributed to us uh, at the end of today. They are still uh, printing them, so we expect that the copies will be made available to all the Sungwe senators. And players along Nigeria's rise value chain have praised uh, the federal government's partial closure of its land borders. They said the move is having a positive impact on rice production. This came on a day they took the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, and his agricultural counterpart on a guided tour of their rice mills and a rice cluster on Thursday. Shego Jumua correspondent reports from Kano. This is the second time this week that Lai Mohammed is visiting the Northwest state. On Monday, he went to Nigeria's border with Niger Republic. On Thursday, he is in Kano State with the Minister of Agriculture. Their mission is to see firsthand the impact the border drills or closure is having on local rice production. Kano State boasts of 11 of Nigeria's 34 rice integrated mills and is therefore strategic to Nigeria's bid for self sufficiency. 5,000 metric tons of rice is produced daily from factories such as these. Those that run them say they have seen a dramatic change of fortune. Our first mill that was installed 10 years back, at a point we have to stop running the mill because of the market. But after the closure of the border, we have to come back and restart it again. Tell us about your installed capacity right now. 320 metric tons per day. Metric tons, yes, and we had an extension of 6,600 metric tons here and also in Bauchi. Kano has 11 rice clusters such as this one in Kura local government area. Kura local government used to be known for processing uh, or farming of tomatoes and other products, but now it is producing rice and this border closure has had a positive effect on the economy here. <laughs> Since the closure, rice milling has been re-energized. Speaking in Hausa, rice millers in this cluster are expressing their delight with government's action. They are also asking for more funding to enable them buy more sophisticated equipment. The Minister of Agriculture is saying government will continue to take actions which will benefit everyone along the rice value chain. I believe that the way and the manner we are going now is the production of rice. In the next two years, we will start exporting rice outside this country. Government through the Anchor Boros program has dispersed over 174 billion naira since 2015. Please don't treat loans from government as a national cake. When loans are not paid back, it becomes difficult for them to get more loan or for other people to get more loan. The federal government has, however, not been left alone to do all the heavy lifting in this business. But back to Kura, and these farmers and rice millers and dealers are doing brisk business. No one knows exactly when the borders will be open, or maybe only those in the corridors of power. But those who grow rice and sell it here say they want the borders to remain shut. While the government may have saved billions of naira from border closure and closing in on smuggling, some manufacturing industries in Nigeria are running into debt 
due to export interruption. Some members of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria have bared their minds on the challenges militating against its eastward buoyant production chain. Our correspondent, Mudupe Oluwa Shuramekun, reports. Many manufacturing companies in Nigeria have thought the African Continental Free Trade Deal would be good business for the sector until the government slammed on them the border closure. For these manufacturers, their contributions to Nigeria's GDP, they say, is gradually being defaced by the overwhelming burden of multiple regulations from different agencies, thereby affecting the competitiveness in the market. Government should call these other agencies to order and then encourage information and data sharing between them and NAVDAC so that we can be saved from this regulatory overkill. One sector that greatly impacts on a wide segment of the public, especially during this Utah period, is household goods such as toiletries and beauty products. Manufacturers of such goods say the closure of land borders is affecting production as export has been greatly curtailed, leading to loss of jobs. The, the bulk of what we produce in this country is consumed by this, our West African neighbors. And so what we make as a country and as manufacturers comes from those countries. Petroleum products do not leave this country in gallons. They leave this country in tanks and in trucks. And so there are better ways of manning the border and allowing these things not to go out. The government should come up with a figure about how much has been saved so that we can have a buy-in that, okay, the border closure was not done with ulterior motives. While it hopes the government weighs more critically the different options of border closure, the local manufacturing sector wants appropriate policies that can limit the influence of foreign products competing in local shops. Moving to other stories for Nigeria's shipping sector to make a meaningful contribution to economic growth, the sector must build capacity to compete. This is according to experts at the maiden edition of the International Shipping Expo in Lagos. Take a listen. These are critical stakeholders in the maritime sector in Nigeria, from lawmakers to regulators and ship owners. It is the Lagos International Shipping Conference aimed at looking at the shipping industry, the global economy and the national development. Speakers at the event say the sector has the potential to contribute immensely to the nation's GDP. However, it is not set to compete. We own like maybe 0.01% of the ships of the world. Um, if we want to play on, in, the, in the real sense of it, we should be talking about uh, owning more ships. It's important for us to come up with policies that will help grow the sector indigenously uh, because we're not where we ought to be and I dare say we've not even scratched the surface. There's so much money that can be made for this sector. As a matter of fact, this sector can account for close to 10% of our GDP if it's properly harnessed. To build capacity, there is a belief that proper legislation must be put in place as well as collaboration. The laws of Nigeria are already in print that any person that is contracting any oil and gas business and finds that Nigerians don't have a capacity and they have to use as a matter of um, as a matter of necessity use uh, foreign ships they have to come up with a, a few years projection three four five years um, a strategic plan to be able to replace those uh, foreign jobs you know, and pass them on to Nigerians. We're also going to partner with them and we want them to see us as partners because uh, we intend to come up with a new law that will ensure that we grow uh, in-country capacity. The meeting took a swipe at issues affecting the sector ranging from technical, education, access to finance, policy formulation and opportunities within the sector. 
The Federal Ministry of Power has announced the introduction of a new electricity distribution policy called Willing Seller, Willing Buyer. It said under the new policy, electricity will be willed directly from generation companies to willing consumers, which may include community and commercial clusters, industrial areas and hospitality sectors ready to fully settle their bills. The Minister of Power, Sari Maman, hinted that the policy was designed to save energy losses in the power sector and assist generating companies which had not been getting the full payment for the power generated. And the Nigerian Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, NASMI, has said that micro and small businesses may not survive charges from bank loans. The Vice President, NASMI Southwest, Mr. Olade Kupo, Jemi Alade, said it is not advisable to approach a commercial bank as a micro or small business. Jemi Alade said that the SMEs are not recognized in Nigeria despite their contributions to the nation's gross domestic product GDP, adding that they face challenges arising from poor access to markets, funding, lack of good business structure and capacity building. Now, those were business stories that made the headlines during the week. We'll take a break now when we come back. We'll dive straight into our interview segment. Now, our focus will be the 2020 budget and the many concerns. Don't go away. All right, welcome back. Just in case you're just joining us, you're watching today's business with me, David Obabudike. Quickly, it's our interview segment. We have in the studio Mukhtar Mohammed, who is a financial analyst, and um, our focus today will be on the 2020 budget. Yes, recent news has it that um, both chamber of the of the legislative arms have both passed uh, the budget with an increase of two, uh, 264 billion naira on the initial figure passed, uh, presented by the presidency bringing the total to about um, 10.59 trillion naira. Now, this no doubt has come with um, some concerns for um, some financial experts. The question on the lips of many Nigerians is how do we intend to fund this budget away from the finance bill that has just been uh, uh, passed? We have Mukhtar. Mukhtar, so much has been said about the budget. Meanwhile, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, David. Yes, so much has been said about the budget. But for, for you, what would you say is of greatest concern to you about the budget 2020? The price of oil, the benchmark. Okay. I, I am at $57 per barrel. Overly optimistic? Overly optimistic. Presently, OPEC has said that definitely we could have a shortfall to as low as $55 per barrel. Yes. So we're getting 50 And remember, the executive proposed even 50 something the $54 per barrel, and they have hiked it to $57 per barrel. That is my greatest worry. Mm. That means there's no room for any savings, there's no room for looking into the future, there's no room for saving in case there's any external shock. So what we mean that we are at the mercy of the, oil market, of, of, of the OPEC market. Yeah, but you could also realize that we have the finance bill, which is also um, um, a, a, a bill that um, aims to shore up our revenue um, to service the 2020 budget. That could also play a huge part away from the oil revenue. Thank God you said it's a financial bill to be signed in by the president. And remember that it, it was estimated. It's estimated mm. based on estimation, mm. based on the number of people that you think you pay tax, being on barely added tax. And again, we already have controversies in most of all this um, tax taxation that's already coming up. So the, the, it could be a thing that is subject to the law court. It could be, a, a lot of things mm. can happen before that time. Already, we're already having instability because even the, the current chairman of FIRS has not, his tenure expired yesterday and yes. he has not been. So that's another challenge. Is he the one to carry, he's the architect of this tax reform. Will he be there to carry it with the other, in, in case it's not there, with the current person that will come take it or will have the same vision, the same drive, or be on the same page like he is. I think that's a, those are part of the question because the financial bill is neither here nor there because it's based on estimation tax revenue to fund some of these what, key what, projects. What, what, what did you say could be the thinking of the legislators to have increased them, the oil benchmark uh, by about four, $4? There's no other thinking than to increase their own. Because that's what I feel because they've actually hiked their own expenditure in the National Assembly to up with, with about $2 billion. 
I think that is that is that is not it's not fair to the Nigerian people because if you look at the the, the, the budget, mm. you realize most of the money is going to recapital, I mean re, recurrent expenditure, expenditure and debt servicing to the determinant of capital uh, expenditure. Uh, expenditure. And but then you could look at the legislature could tie that okay. You don't need to spend so much money in capital expenditure because the government is already thinking of borrowing to 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 to, 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 to build key uh, infrastructures. That is a challenge again. When you say the government is borrowing, borrowing to be paid infrastructure, how would they get this money to pay? Mm. Are they going? To, are we going back to the borrowing, the, the kind of debt we are owing? That at the point we we, we don't have money to do any other thing mm. than to keep borrowing. That is my challenge. Also. You, you, men, you mentioned that the debt, the, 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 debt um, the votes for debt servicing, which um, our figure stands at 2.72 trillion naira, and then um, we are aware of a new proposal by the presidency uh, to lay for 30, 30 billion dollars, yes, for infrastructure. Uh, do, do you see this as a huge concern? Very huge concern for me. Not because they are not borrowing right. I think they, they, they try to borrow with key projects in mind, which is, is an added advantage. Yeah. Because before we just borrow um, to take care of our luxury, take care of recurrent expenditure. But now we're seeing the budget, the government is borrowing to fund specific they budget. Say, they say they will, they will focus on specific projects. What, what is the guarantee? The, the budget is tight. The borrowing is tied, tied to, to specific projects. Yes. What the president presented to the National Assembly is tied to specific projects. So, that could be good. We could man monitor it. We could generate some law employment will come from there. So tax will come from there. And there could be some of them that will create the toll plaza. That so there's a lot of things that can come out from there. But my major concern is that we are going deep, 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 deep it's into debt. debt. And what we keep saying is that the debt to GDP ratio is still very low. It's comfortable. Yes. It's comfortable. But what about, what about the debt to revenue? That should be another concern because if I see debt to GDP ratio, it has to do with the oil price, it has to be the stability in the Niger yeah, Delta, yeah. it has to be stability in oil price, that's why we're going to have that. But when you talked about income, then we can say how much can we get from the non-oil sector without the oil sector? Mm. You know, there we have a challenge. You know, you know this, this whole issue about um, um, diversifying the economy has been in, in the front burner. Uh, do we see do we see enough being done? Do do we really see a government raking in revenues from the non oil sector? Because there are uh, everything points to the fact that we are still very dependent on the oil sector. Yes, oil sector is our key economy. This is like a man. I keep saying you are in your job. Your job seems to be your main revenue source. Doesn't mean you can't develop other sources, other sources of, revenue. of revenue. I think that's what the government is doing, and you have to give it to them. They try to bring CBI try to directly intervene in some key sectors, agriculture, textile sector, and so we, we might not see those dividends paying out um, anytime soon. But in the long run, we we'll see that playing out because even even the closure of the border has made we we'll begin to see that we have a lot of rice farmers even. So those are some of the positives that will come out in the long term. But in the short term, it could be very very tough for us. Interesting. Let's look at let's look at the issue of um, of uh, budget deficits: two point two eight trillion naira. Do we, I don't know, is this budget, maybe you should put me in the know, this deficit, is it what the finance bill is, is made uh, to cover for? It will not cover all, but you cover part of it. There's, there's nothing bad in having bu the budget deficit because if you look at the federal government five years financial plan, you could, you could see that they are looking at the budget deficit going down each financial year, which is good. So by the time we have the, that's why they put that budget deficit that that will be not including what we are going to get from the from the from the tax base. So by the time we get that, I think the budget deficits will come down. Uh, the 2019 budget is just about um, four or five months um, 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 gone into implementation. Uh, even though we don't have the full figures into how much um, uh, the figures as regards the implementation for 2019 budget, how, how could this impact in 2020? Well, what it means is that if the government signed to law like they are planning to sign to law. So that means the 2019 budget will just have a lifespan of about six months. Yeah. So by January, we'll begin to see the effect of the 2020 budget, which is very, very good. That means we've been able to bring budget from January to December. Now, that means most of all these budgets, um, the 2019 budget, those of them that funding has not been released, that means they have to key into the next budget. Then the challenge is that we're there even make, make provision for them in the next budget. If they don't make position for them in the next budget and they're not able to back up those cash to do those projects, mm. that's where we come have a challenge of having abundant projects all over Nigeria. Okay, so um, so what you're saying is um, should we have um, not um, 
implemented um, to the latter the 2019 budget would they be carrying the project from 2019 what about the funds the funds are also that's what i say that they carry the funds also to 2020 they should do that but I, I but they should do that but that would mean the president sending another some a bill to the national assembly was called supplementary bill mm -hmm. if they are not captured in the 2020 budget remember some of these projects are long-term projects yes. like the legacy badon expressway the second niger b bridge the rail um, system from lagos to ibadan so those are uh, in the budget that have year-to-year -year projection of yes. how much funds should yes. be injected into them. So this could be a continuous project, I think so. Your good projection for 2020. <laughs> uh, I need to read the details of those, of those budget to see because the best projection you can get for 2020 is if we have stable oil price, then we'll begin to see microeconomic stability, especially mm. inflation coming down. Then we see the rate of youth unemployment coming down. And if you look at all these three things, they are very Hercules tax. What do I feel about the 2020 budget? It could be a budget that will give us a lot in terms of infrastructure. That should be one of the key drives that we achieve with this budget. But then we begin to look at bringing microeconomic stability into it, maybe going forward. That, that, still, that still doesn't give me a clear picture of what your prediction for the, budget, for the 2020 growth projection could be. And, and it figures. The government is projecting uh, 2.4 or thereabout. What would, what, would you, what, would you, what would you project? I stay with the World Bank. We say 1.9. 1.9? Just a huge disparity. So, so wh why would you think that the federal government is so optimistic that it can achieve a 2.4? Well, you could draw that optimistic already. That, uh, they said they've got achieved a 2.38 in the first quarter of this year. This, this could be this one. They, are, they are looking at the non oil sector, also one mm. key driver there. Mm. So, I think. If you look at their own data, you look at what they have, you could say, okay, they are very optimistic on based on that. But when you look at the microeconomics, you look at the price of oil, you look at the budget closure, you look at inflation, you look at youth unemployment, you look at the of borrowing, you won't but agree that if we achieve 1.9, it's a very huge achievement. Mm. So let's, 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 let's look at um, um, sectors of the economy that we, we might need to propel um, this growth projection. What sector do you think government should focus more on, away from oil? We, 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 we farming hasn't done so much, agriculture rather hasn't done so much. There are other sectors in the non, the non oil sector that you think government should focus on? I think government should first of fo focus in the non oil sector. For me, government should focus still on bringing a very good um, tax policy. That would be one of the key drivers of the economy. If we're able to have a win win situation when it comes to our tax reforms, and we're able to tax, we're able to pay reasonable taxes, we're able to, 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 to pay the taxes at as when due, and we're able to utilize this money, then that will be a key thing that will boost our revenue. We can't underplay the position, the, the impact of um, foreign direct investment. Do you see uh, this tax bill as an incentive uh, for, for FDIs, uh, a possibility of increasing our FDIs for 2020? No, I don't see that as a possibility of increasing our ID, uh, FDI. Our FDI will definitely increase, but at, at which sector is it increasing? But we have seen FDI that are coming in to steal, or we seen FDI that are coming in to make profit. Portfolios. Portfolios. So definitely it will increase because with this tax reform, a lot of companies will be doing things differently. A lot of revenue will come. The economy will be boosted by the type of level of borrowing that the CBN have made the bank do. So that means they will come in and partake in our equity market, in our fixed income market, in our treasury market. Then they will gain what they have to get. But now seeing they have to stay long, that is the challenge because most of them will not even stay long when they look at the tax reform mm. if it's not good for their business. So what do we do to keep them, to make them stay longer in terms of our policies? I think we've done enough for them to stay long. They need to agree with our policy. We need to begin to drive home home growth, um, uh, 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 economic growth policy. If we get it right, the foreign direct investors that come in and, and go, they will still come back again because they are looking for a way to make profits. They are not looking. So if we get it right and they see that our environment is profitable, even if they go in the short term, in the long run, they will come back. So for, 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 for proper impact, how, how much implementation would you be expecting for the 2020 budget? Final question from me. If you sign into law in January, I expect implementation to be very swift. I would expect it to get to like 70%. If it's, if it's signed into law in January, if the, 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 the presidency doesn't have an issue. And 70% budget, is good enough for you? I think 70%, for the economy? 70% will be, will be fair for the economy, may not be very good enough, but remember we are coming from 
about budget performance of 30%. So getting mm. to 40, 70%, mm. that's huge. That's over a 100% increment. You know, there, was, there was a recent um, uh, release by the World Bank sometime last week um, warning our government about the fact that Nigeria could be home to the highest number of destitutes in, 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 in nearest possible time if we don't deal with them, a lot of our fiscal policies. Does this hit you hard? Very hard. But this, you see, this has been coming since they've been saying. You remember, you just woke up for the World Bank, the IMF made the mention that the presidency came and said, no, they don't have the truth of the figure. They are not, they're not giving the truth of the figure. Then they came out on that policy again and said, Nigeria is ranked well in the ease of doing business. The government accepted it and said, wow, you can see what we're performing. So the government should learn to see IMF, World Bank criticism as a, a barometer to see how they can grow the economy, what they are doing right and what they are doing wrong, and begin to work on it. For me, that should be the main driver of the economy, the main driver of the government whenever they listen to this report. Where have we done well? Where do we need to improve? Then they take it from there. You know, part of the concerns that the World Bank raised was the fact that um, in 2018, or there about 2019, they said um, we created 5 million jobs with about, uh, no, we created 450,000 jobs with about 5 million out of jobs, leaving us a deficit of about 4.5 million people out of jobs. So unemployment rate, as we speak, do we have the figures of our current unemployment rate? Well, we do have, but maybe not, not, not in, in entirety, but I think we do have, because the last time the Bureau of Statistics always come with this, 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 this the last time I think they said about 30, about 80 something million Nigerians are, are not employed. That's about what percentage of our population? That gives it about 20 something percent of, 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 of our graduates are not employed. So we have, time that's a time bomb. It's a time bomb? It's a time bomb. Anyway, so I think that's won't be a bad place to end the conversation. Uh, Mokhtar Mohammed, thank you so very much for your insight. To thank you, David. Economic matters. And congratulations over your wedding. Thank you so very much for talking to us on the show. That was Mukhtar Mohammed, an economic um, and financial expert. So I'm afraid that's about how far we can take on the program today till I come your way again next week. Do have yourself a profitable business day. Bye for now. <laughs>